What's up guys, Tristan here from the CPAPstore.ca. Today we are looking at five minimalist masks for CPAP and CPAP travel, you could say, because they're so compact. The masks are going to be the ResMed P10, the ResMed N30, Fisher & Paykel Bravada, the Fisher & Paykel Micro, and at last the Fisher & Paykel Vora nasal mask. Kind of look like a big squid. So I'll tell you how this video is going to work. I have 10 categories here. We're gonna rate each category from zero to five on these masks. Afterwards, we are gonna add them all up and find our average and our best average out of five stars. At that point, we're gonna take Tristan's review because obviously it's gonna be a bit subjective. We're gonna take the score, we're gonna add it to the Google review score, combining them, making it the final score of these masks. Now that being said, each mask has their own fan base, their own cohort of lovers and diehard fans because each mask is better for each different types of face. So even though I'm using a five point scale to make this video a little easier to digest, please think about what I am saying and thinking, okay, that might actually relate to you or doesn't relate to you. So you can try to figure out which mask is gonna be best for you before you waste your money buying mask after mask after mask, trying to find the best one. Maybe just dislike the video if it doesn't help you at all, but please like this video and give us a comment if it does. So the first category we're looking at is compactness or just how small these masks are, how well you can pack them. And at first you would think that I would rate the P10 and the N30 the same. I thought, okay, how about if this was the pocket that you had in the side of your backpack, how well could these masks fit in these bags? And let's make the compactness based on this bag. So I will put the P10 into here. So as you can see, we can put it all the way in with not much problems, okay? It fits all the way in there. However, it was a little bit tight to put in and it does take a while. Whereas the N30 actually has, it almost seems like a slightly smaller or compact tube. You can see the N30 has a smaller tube. And so I thought they were kind of the, gonna be the exact same, but the N30 packs way faster inside, okay? So there we go, the N30's packed away, and I still have a little bit of room for some more stuff. So somehow, I guess it's probably mainly the tube. The N30 is actually slightly more compact than the P10. Next, I have the Bravada, which is definitely a lot trickier. So this is about as much as I can get with the Bravada. Then we have the Evora here, which features this more structured design, more of a baseball cap design, which as you can imagine, isn't very easy to get in my little bag. We got about that far here. And then we have the Micro, the smallest of them all, smallest headgear. And there we go, there it's inside here. And look, it basically, it only needs half the bag to fit. Okay, so that's how small the micro is. And the reason why I do this test, I know it seems a little lengthy when I could just say they're all minimal and blah, blah, blah. But when you see like the white pictures of them when you buy them, uh, like they're all displayed, you know, well, and they all look the same. So we, you don't really know how small and compact they are until you get them in the hand. And hopefully that test allows you to have a little more of a visual. So the micro is in first place there with five points. The N30 fit in the bag with no problems at 4.5. The P10 was a little trickier, so it gets four points. Then the Bravada almost fit, but not quite, so three points. And the Evora had no hope to get in that little bag. So we're gonna give it two points. The Evora is still a small mask. You're gonna need to lay it flat in your suitcase. But if you're traveling with a mask, there is actually a pretty big difference between taking an Evora and taking a Micro. So that might be something to consider. The next category is headgear comfort. The P10 and the N30 are going to receive five in this category, just right off the bat. Their nice elastic headband is super soft. There's no buckles, there's no sharp edges, and it's soft and plush all the way through. I really can't say anything that's discomforting with the P10 headgear or the N30 headgear. They also have this little bit of a plastic inside here that's covered with this nice knit material that curves the mask up. As you can see, it naturally goes up. So there's no chance of it touching your top of the ear there. And even if it does, it's very soft on the side. Next place, we have the Micro with 4.5. The reason why is, you know, it's only half a point. I wanted to deduce it by something just because uh, the back of the mask is is nice and stretchy, the, the nice stretchy headgear at back. The front is okay, it's nice and soft, but because they wanted to have this adjustment, which helps in other aspects, it just has a more structured material, not quite as soft. If I run my thumb against the edge of this headgear versus the edge of the P10, 
there's no denying, even if this is your favorite mask, it is a little bit sharper than the P10 and the N30. And because of that, I deduced half a point. So 4.5 for that guy there. And then 3.5 stars go to the Evor and the Brevita. The Brevita, I just feel is just not as stretchy as the other two masks, um, as you can see, has minimal stretch. It does have this adjustment, which is nice. The band is just straight. It doesn't arc up like the Micro or the P10. So it has a little bit of rubbing on the ear that I just can't seem to get around, as well as the material just being a little bit stronger feeling, but with that comes a little less elasticity and a little less softness, okay? So 3.5 for the Bavita there. And then 3.5 also for the Evora. Uh, this is a very structured mask, very good at holding its shape on the face, which we're gonna talk about, but it's a very hard, plastic material and sometimes depending how it's on the head on the ears around the cheek simply not as soft as the other competitors here so i had to give it a 3.5 now the next category is headgear ergonomics what hindered the evora in the last category softness is exactly what gives it the top place in ergonomics because the headgear is heavily structured you could have this just on the side of your bed and with one hand you can put it on just like that and go to bed. So super, super easy to take on and put off. The ergonomics of this mask is extremely innovative. Once you set it up and dial it to your specifications, it's really probably the easiest mask in the world to put on and off. There's no other mask like it. So a five for ergonomics. Now the rest of the lot are very, very similar. You just put it on your nose and stretch it back. I can't really fault each, each one. Like for example, the Fisher and Pico ones both have adjustment straps on the side whereas the ResMed ones are fully elastic. So one has more adjustment, one has more elasticity. I can't really choose which is better. So they're all gonna receive a four, except for the Evora, which receives a five. The next category is cushion comfort. So the N30 and the Micro for me are by far the most comfortable. The comfort of the N30 to me is second to none. It also comes in a nice small wide variant and just rests under the nose just so seamlessly. And the same thing with the Micro. It has a little bit of pillows, but they're super soft and you barely feel them. They just rest just like that underneath the nostril. Um, and they're just so, so comfortable. All the other masks in this category get a four. The Evora receives a four because it has these stability wings here, uh, which help it stay a little more structured, especially with this harder headgear here. Uh, it does have a feeling of sometimes when you squish against the pillow, it can feel a little bit uh, discomforting right around where those stability wings are. The Bravada is very similar, very soft, plush cushion, just like the Micro. However, it has these stability wings and just something about it, maybe it's just the bulkier front when you're lying um, on you know a little more face down slightly or on your side, there's a little more bulk there. You got these stability wings here. so not as comfortable as the Micro. And then the P10, not as comfortable as the N30 because simply these pillows, which help it seal a lot better, kind of go more in your nose, there's a little more pressure. So all these masks, they're all comfortable. I'm just gonna have to give a four to the P10, the Evora and the Bravita. Now cushion seal. This one is very important because it's very subjective on whose face the masks are on. So. You might have to do your own research, base your opinions. If you look like me, if you have a soft nose, if you have a pointy nose, it could be totally different. I base this test on basically sleeping with the mask as well as moving the mask around when I just have the CPAP on a little bit and seeing where it leaks and, and how well it holds the seal. The P10 for me holds the seal the best simply because the cushion has the very two prominent pillows here. They allow for movement of the nose around, they kind of like twirl around and they always keep the seal um, pretty much very good to go. So uh, I don't really have problems with leaking with the P10. The N30, Bravita and Micro all get a four. They're just not quite as good as the P10. I find that when you kind of lift up, when the tube has a little upward pressure, for example, if you're sleeping, it's caught in your pillow or you have a tube hook and your neck's kind of tilt down and you moved it. I find that there's a little bit of leaking there with the N30, the Micro and the Bravita, but nothing crazy, just not as good as the P10. And then lastly, we have the Evora. Now the Evora is a very hit or miss mask for seal leaking, so listen up. The stability wings here, uh, be, them being hard and holding kind of this cradle in place, uh, kind of make it perfect for a certain type of nose. So a lot of people who have more Caucasian pointier noses, a little more structured nose, their nose kind of plants right in there and it doesn't leak at all and it's a great mask for them. I, unfortunately, gonna have to uh, 
uh, rank this a little bit lower than the others because the Evora doesn't fit with my nose very well. I just can't get it to hold a seal with a higher pressure. Uh, I would never use high pressure, but I test all these with very high pressure to see, and it definitely leaked the most out of the four, so it gets a 3.5. Cushion seal being a very important topic is going to be double weighted. So I'm double weighting this value here. The next thing is stability. So stability was tested based on more of a bigger jerk. While cushion seal was the tube moving around a little bit, me moving around on the pillow, the stability is what happens when you roll over and you turn your head, or your, your tube gets caught, how well does the mask stay on your face? For this test, I put all the masks on and use my hand and I just jolted the mask five times. After those five times, trying to stay as consistent as I could, I would look at the mask and see where it was on the face. With stability, the Evora blew everything out of the water. It moved a tiny bit, but one tap of my hand and boom, right back where it should be. Of course, that's because it is not as small as these other masks. It has more adjustments than the other masks. It has more points or solid points of contact. So of course it does very well in the stability, but like I said earlier, not as compact, right? So pick your battles. The Evora definitely won that category. Now the second place mask for the stability category is the Bravita, simply because I think it has the least elasticity, it not being very stretchy at all. Once you put it onto your face, have it at a nice, uh, not too tight, but a nice snug fit. When you're pulling the tube, it doesn't tend to move as much. And so it gets a four, not as good as the Evora, but definitely stayed in place decently well. The last three masks, the N30, the P10, and the Micro, all have a lot stretchier. So when I pulled the tube, they would kind of stretch out of place and snap back into place, but they would snap back a little further to the right every time. So I found that these three masks with the elastic headgear have the worst in terms of stability, staying on your face when you kind of jolt your head with the tube there. Okay, so they got a three in this category. Next up, let's talk about diffusers. So the winners here are the Brevita and the N30. Now, how do I rate the diffusers? Well, with the diffusers, there's two things that I kept in mind mainly. The first thing is, how well do they work when you're exhaling air? Does it feel like there's a lot of pressure back? Is it easy for a new CPAP user? Could a new CPAP user uh, feel comfortable with it with exhaling? The other thing, how well does it diffuse the air? And is there like a windstorm in front of your face? Okay, so some masks, if you're new to CPAP, have a little stronger diffusers and keep like, you can't really feel much air blowing around you. Other masks, on the other hand, blow a little more air and people with partners, sleeping with their partner, if they face towards their partner, their partner is just getting wind in their face or the wind is blowing on the blankets, hitting you back in the eyes and you're getting dry eyes. So that's kind of what makes a good and bad diffuser. So the best diffusers were the N30 and the Bravada because I felt like both of them diffuse the air uh, where I wasn't feeling a windstorm in front of my face, but uh, I found them fairly easy to exhale out of. Up next was the P10, diffuses the air extremely well, but I find that is just ever so slightly harder to exhale out of the P10 than the N30, so I had to dock at a point, it got a five, and then 3.5 and 3.5 to the Micro and the Evora, very easy to exhale out of, so keep that in mind if you want a mask that is good to exhale out of. These two are great, but there's no felt on the front of these masks or kind of like mesh or anything like that. So they do have a little more air. When I have them on at a 15 pressure, I feel that the air is kind of blowing out of the diffuser ports at around six to seven inches. You can kind of feel it. Whereas the other guys, you have to be like within one or two inches to feel that air. So the Evora and the Micro, unfortunately get 3.5 in this category just because you can feel the air when you're wearing them. The next category is cleaning. So in top spot, we have the micro. Really nice about it is that you can take the cushion off with one just pull tab and the entire cushion is very easy to wipe with a CPAP wipe. Um, it's all one piece, there's no like different connectors. Same thing with the front of the mask here where the uh, tube connects. It's a very, very clean, very like no tight edges or anything like that. Uh, so your daily wipe is very easy. You can clean this very fast. And then secondly, the diffuser being so simple, uh, you can just wipe it down. So your weekly and daily wipes and cleans are very simple with this mask. In the next place, we have the Evora. So the Evora has a simple, clean design. Again, the diffuser is very easy to wipe down. Both your daily and weekly cleans are easy with this thing. Very easy to wipe down because of the harder headgear here. But the stability wings do pose a little bit of a cleaning 
not issue, but you're gonna have to spend a little more time cleaning this mask as compared to the micro, so it gets a four. And then the other three masks all get three and a half each. Um, at first, I was gonna say that the N30 is one of the highest rated because the daily clean of this mask is extremely easy. Probably the easiest of all the masks here because you can take it off the cushion super easily and everything inside is just very smooth, very easy to wipe down. However, the weekly clean with this mask is a little harder because the diffuser filter is kind of embedded and press sealed between these two parts here. There's two almost foam looking filters. You can't take them out, so it takes a little longer to dry. Um, and just making sure that you are cleaning that and replacing this mask regularly um, is very important. So because of those diffusers there, it's a little harder to clean, so 3.5. Um, and then with the P10, similar kind of system here with the diffusers on the outside of the tube. This has a more plasticky mesh design. Sometimes you get a little bit of gunk uh, jammed up in there. So you wanna make sure you clean that. Again, the daily wipe of this mask is very easy, um, but because of that, it's gonna be 3.5 as well as the pillows compared to something like the Evora, you know, are a little bit harder to clean and get in there. So the weekly clean is a little bit longer and then same thing with the Brivada. The Brivada actually has a few steps to make it really easy to clean. So we have the removable diffuser right here that you can clean and dry super easily. Everything else is fairly simple to remove and clean, but there is a little deeper crevices than the other two that were mentioned. Um, and so it's gonna get a uh, 3.5. Also, it just has more stuff to it. You have the ball joint, you have clips. There's a little more things to clean for your daily and your weekly clean. So despite them having their best efforts of removing the diffuser and stuff like that, there's just a little more going on. Okay, now we have the second last category, tube connection. Okay, the winner of this category is gonna be the micro. Why? Because you can see a very small, small cushion up front, very minimal tube connection there and the tube spins very nicely. So it's sleek, it's small, it's, it's, it's tight, and also it spins, which I like. So that's gonna give it a five. Now trailing two points behind is the N30 and the P10, simply because it doesn't have any swivel or any movement, no ball joint whatsoever. It's nice and small and minimal, very easy to clean, no crazy crevices like that, so I do like it, but it would be nice if they swiveled, so I'm gonna give that a three out of five. Also with a three out of five is gonna be the Bravita. Now I know what you're saying, Tristan, it has a ball joint. Why doesn't it get a five? Well, the reason why it doesn't get a five is simply because the connection is a little bit bulky. Just look at the size of the connection between the micro and the Bravita. Like the entire micro cushion and swivel joint is pretty much the size of just the ball joint of the Bravita. And because of that extra bulkiness, I'm gonna give it a three. And then at last place, we have the Evora because it doesn't swivel at all, there's no swivel, there's no ball joint, there's nothing, um, and it's pretty much just as bulky as a Bravita. So it's a little bit bulky, no swivel, nothing, 2.5, okay? So 2.5 for the Evora, just three for the other three, and then a leaping five for the Micro way up front. Now the last category is travel CPAP options. Now ResMed was smart because they made uh, the ResMed Air Mini travel CPAP machine. It's one of the best travel CPAP machines on the market, but they made it uh, to be best compatible with like P10 and N30. So if you wanna use that travel CPAP machine with the Humid X humidity system, which doesn't require more battery power or anything like that, you're gonna need to use the P10 or the N30. Now you have to have the like Air Mini Fit Pack for the P10 and N30, but if you are getting used to the P10 and the N30 at home, you can have the exact same experience out on the trails or hiking or camping or whatever because you can have the same mask. Because of that, and because the Air Mini is the probably the best selling travel CPAP on the market, I'm gonna say that the P10 and the N30 have five in this category because they can use other travel CPAPs like a Z2 for example, but they can also uh, come with the Humid X version on the Air Mini. Whereas the other guys here, you can use an adapter to use the Air Mini, but you aren't gonna be able to run the Humidex tabs. So like the, you can use them for the Air Mini with an adapter, or you can use them with like a Z2 uh, without an adapter, but doesn't have as much flexibility in terms of CPAP camping travel options, right? So the ResMed masks are gonna get five in this category, and the other masks are gonna get four in this category. 
Bonus category, I forgot to add this earlier, but noise. This is really similar to the diffuser talk, so typically stronger diffusers are gonna have less noise. That's not always the case, but in our rating system, it seems to flow roughly in that way. I find that the P10 is gonna get a five because it is the quietest of these masks for me. It seals better, so you naturally have less noise every time it would have leaked, and also diffuser is pretty strong. Next place, we have a four going to the Bravada and the N30. Again, the diffusers work pretty well. Minimal air going to your face. There's a tiny bit more noise I find with the N30 than with the P10, um, but they are still quiet masks. And then at last we have the Evora and the Micro with their lack of uh, strong diffusers, just basically being tiny holes. With the wind that is blowing around, hitting stuff, the blankets and stuff like that, blowing into your face, as well as the noise that that extra turbulence, if you will, causes. Uh, yeah, they're just gonna be a little bit noisier. Now it's time to tally up the scores. So the winner is, in my personal preference, is gonna be the P10. Okay, the P10 got 4.21 as a total score for Tristan's review. In second place and third place, I, they're tied for second, is the Micro and the N30 at 4.17. Then at third place, we've got the Bravada at 3.83, and then the Evora at 3.63. Now, when we look at the Google reviews, they are as follows, and they're actually pretty similar standing as my review, actually. So the P10 wins in this category as well at 4.5 for Google then 4.1 for the N30, four for the Bravada, and then 3.8 for the Evora. And then the Micro is too new of a mask. There's not any reviews on the mask right now when I'm filming this video. So just for calculation purposes, I'm gonna give it a 4.1. Um, it's not a real as made up, but that's just an average of the other Google reviews. So when we combine my reviews with the Google reviews and put them together, we have this standing here, P10 number one at 4.35. Then we have the N30 and the Micro at 4.13, the Bravada at 3.92, and the Evora at 3.2. 7, 1. Now, I just want to reiterate that these scores, you should think about what I said and think about which mask might work best for you because those numbers are so tight together that if you think your nose, for example, would work better in the Evora or you like the one-handed action there, putting it on and off, this guy here could easily be your number one mask. These scores are just my opinion and also trying to be as objective as possible, but it might not come down to the softness here and the stretch here. It might not come down to those things. Your best mask could just fit you kind of like a glove. Finding the right CPAP mask is kind of like finding the right girlfriend. You could have the right girlfriend with all the things checked off on a list, but if you're not falling in love, what's the point? And it's the same thing with the chemistry you must have with your CPAP mask, and it must have that little pizzazz, that little zest that you might not be able to calculate on. The funny thing is with the Google reviews, you'll notice that the Bravita gets a lot of four-star reviews. The Evora gets like either best mask ever, like awesome, like gonna be my mask for life. And then it also gets like does not work for me at all. It's a lot more innovative and a lot more hit or miss mask. So I think that the Google reviews kind of artificially give it low because a lot of people hate it, but then a lot of people love it. So like even though it's last place in this list, I would probably recommend people try it on in the clinic uh, because it's a very high chance that someone's gonna love it. It's just, it's one of those innovative lover it or hate it type of masks. So like I said, take this review with a grain of salt. That is it for the video. Please leave a comment. Please let us know your ratings. Is this video helpful? Did it, did it help anyone? Let me know. See you guys later. Subscribe, like, Bye. Hey guys, hate to stop the video, just editing here. The CPAP store used to be known for the rock bottom prices, like best prices. Maybe we push it too far, whatever. Our suppliers aren't allowing us to do that anymore. We have to be like above a price threshold when we advertise our prices on the internet. And so the prices that we can send you on the emails, or if you like log in on our website and get those promo codes, the promo code prices knock a significant amount of money off our CPAP supplies, like a lot. I'm not just talking like $10 per mask. Like we're talking like a good amount. I can't specify because of the rules and blah, blah, blah. But like on CPAP machines, we're talking like hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Like right now you can get the Air Mini and uh, get like 
a huge discount off the Air Mini if you look at our email promo codes. Um, and I just don't want you guys to be overspending. We Canadians already overspend at the CPAP clinics and sleep clinics, which mark up like crazy. And I don't want you guys to do that. I'd prefer you guys buy from the CPAP store.ca, but I prefer you guys get the best price on our website. So sign up for the emails, get the promo codes, unsubscribe after. I, I, I don't care. Just get the best prices.